one day after people. Those who kept the forces of nature under control have vanished. Nature, long contained, is poised for an outbreak of violence and chaos, disease and disaster. In Chicago, there is no crew to maintain Wrigley Field. Its ultimate opponent, already embedded in the outfield wall. No one to maintain the Sears Tower or John Hancock Center, now standing like giant tombstones. And no one to manage the Chicago River, one of the most heavily engineered waterways in the world. As each day passes, nature begins taking over. Three days after people, a rainstorm hits Chicago. In the time of humans, such a deluge would have been unremarkable. The Chicago River should flow into Lake Michigan, the massive body of water bordering the city. But in 1900, man turned on nature. The river's flow was reversed to prevent pollution of Chicago's drinking water. This left man in firm control of water levels, employing engineering techniques that were later used in building the Panama Canal. In the time of humans, whenever it rained, river engineers managed canal locks and sluice gates to divert the current away from the lake. But now, after more than a century, the river gets its revenge. In a life without people, we wouldn't be able to anticipate such an event and open gates to manipulate the water levels. The entire river system would fill up gradually, just like water in a bathtub. Initially, it would flood low areas in downtown Chicago and the basements of buildings along the river. Soon, the high river levels begin surging south along the man-made channels towards the gates of the Lockport Controlling Works, 35 miles downstream. The 109-year-old complex controls the drainage of the Chicago River. That's about to change. The cascade of water dropping on the downstream side would erode the piers holding the gates up. The days when man controlled this river are over. There's about 10 to 20 billion gallons of water behind these gates. And when that structure collapses, that wall of water will send a torrent down the Des Plaines River to the city of Joliet, where it would overtop the river walls and flood the center city. Just days after people, entire towns in the American Midwest are wiped out by raging water. One month into a life after people. Outside Atlanta, an outbreak of kudzu is starting to spread freakishly. The vine was brought to the United States in 1876 from Japan for farmers to feed their animals and for erosion control. It was a mistake. It grows in bright sunlight and on fertile soils very rapidly. It can grow up to a foot a day, so you can have a 60-foot vine where you had nothing. Known as the vine that ate the south, kudzu has a vast root network that spreads more than 15 feet underground. In the time of humans, it took constant cutting by a 25-man maintenance crew just to keep the roadways clear in Atlanta. 
and the surrounding county. You have to keep going back and killing the above ground portion of the plant until you've exhausted the energy reserves in the root system. And considering the size and the depth of those roots, it can be a very difficult job. With no natural enemies in the region and no humans to contain it, kudzu starts wreaking havoc. The non-native species starts strangling trees, climbing telephone poles and power lines, covering bridges and roadways, and enveloping rural houses. It creates a situation that there is nothing growing there but the kudzu. And what you have is literally a dead spot in the environment. As kudzu thrives, livestock struggles. 60 million hogs are confined on North American farms. In the time of humans, they fed a demand for 51 pounds of pork per American every year. Now, they starve. Pigs in captivity have been known to resort to cannibalism. Two months after people, the hogs that survive become frantic. The bigger 500-pound beasts start pushing their way out of their pens. Others begin burrowing under sheds. Eventually, millions break out into the wild. Of all the domesticated livestock that I would put my money on in a world without people, probably the pig gets top prize. Pigs are omnivores. Basically, anything that you can eat, a pig can eat. They're also very intelligent, and they're very good doers.